Hey y'all, it's Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's summer tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created these painted swirl watermelon tumblers. These are so adorable for the summertime. And like always, all of my materials that I'm using in this video will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And don't forget to find me on all of my socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and obviously YouTube. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm using a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler and I'm going to prep my tumbler by using an 80 grit sanding block. I use anywhere between an 80 grit and a 180 grit sanding block when I prep my tumblers. And I go ahead and I sand that tumbler down. And once I'm finished sanding, I take a 91% alcohol wipe or I just put alcohol on a cut paper towel and I wipe down my tumbler with my 91% alcohol. This allows all of those uh, like surfaces to be clean of dust and particles and it just gives you a nice smooth uh, surface. So whenever you apply your epoxy, your epoxy will not repel in certain areas. Once I'm finished with that, I'm going to paint my tumbler white. I use pop of color paint pure white to paint this white. You can always use spray paint or whichever white paint that you have on hand. And I'm going to be using my wet and wild brush, my makeup brush to paint on this paint. I typically use my paint during the summer times because I live in Florida and it's basically opposite for the winter up north. It's so hot outside. I do not like going outside in the summertime. So I typically paint all of my tumblers in the summer and then I try to spray paint them in the winter because let's be real, it's really not winter in Florida. So it doesn't get that cold out here whenever you spray paint. So this is just my first coat of paint. I'm going to paint this and then let this dry for about 20 minutes before adding the other paints to the tumbler. These are all the paints I'll be using for this tumbler. And I'm going to be using my Wet n Wild makeup brushes. And I always like to keep them damp whenever I apply my paints to my tumblers. So I just rinse them underneath the water and I just put them on a paper towel to make them damp. And then I have my painter's tray. I'm actually just gonna use one of the painter's tray and not the second one. I purchased these from Amazon. They're like $3 for two. And the colors that I'm using are just colors of like pink and hot pink. And I'm using them all from Pop of Color and the same with the green. So if I would have had like a lighter pink or a darker pink or a different color pink on hand, that's the colors I would have used. I really didn't overthink it. I just grabbed my greens and my pinks and then once they mix, they just look like watermelon. So if you do have like other pinks on hands or even different brands of inks, you can use the Apple Barrel inks. You can always use those. I try not to go out and buy any extra materials. I try to either mix colors or just use what I have on hand because watermelons, they aren't all the same. Some people have like lighter watermelons. Some people are more of that hot pink. Some people are more of like that baby pink, I guess. So just try not to go out and buy everything. Just remember you can mix your paints and you can always mix your brands. You don't have to use all pop of color brands. If I didn't have like a green, I would have just used Apple Barrel. So I'm just placing them inside of these little painters trays and I'm making sure I'm placing them together. So I'm not separating them. I want them all together. The reason I want them all together is so when I place that brush inside of that painter's tray, I want those colors to all three be on that brush. So you'll see that I'm just placing it upright and to the paint. I'm not mixing it and I'm not like blotting it because I want those colors to come together, but I don't want them mixing to make a new color. So if I take my paintbrush and I mix around into that uh, painter's tray, it's going to mix those colors and I'm just going to get one solid pink. And I don't want that. I want those pinks to still look good together and kind of blend as they are but I also want them to be three different colors so you could see those paint swirls around the tumbler. And then I'm just going in a diagonal motion around the tumbler and it's really easy. You just start in one spot and then you can clean it up as you go. And I'm just taking my time with this and I want to make sure I'm having a swirl on this tumbler. I don't really want like a rectangle place on this tumbler. So I want to swirl with the tumbler. You see how I'm moving my hand and my wrist and that tumbler is moving as I'm painting it and that allows me to have that swirl effect. 
And then I'm doing the same thing with the green. I'm making sure to place that paintbrush in both of the colors and then adding the paint to the tumbler. Now with the green, I noticed I added a little bit too much of that darker green once I was finished. So all I did was I dipped my paintbrush into the lighter green and I just did the same motions. And you'll see the lighter green just places right over that darker green really easily. And once I had the green and the pink paints placed down, I then took the same brush. Um, I think I actually just stuck with that green brush. And then I placed my brush into the white and I'm just adding the white between the green and the pink area just to soften those edges. Now this part is optional because we are going to add some white paint in our epoxy later, but I just wanna do this just to soften up those edges. Um, just. I don't know, maybe because I was OCD or maybe if that <laughs> epoxy uh, white didn't cover it up, but I just thought it looked a lot better. And then I just did that very carefully. I added a very little amount of paint and it really didn't matter if those pinks and, and greens mixed on this process because this is like a paint swirl mixture kind of tumbler, right? So now I'm just adding uh, pink on one side and then green on the other side. I'm just blotting it on very softly. I'm sorry I couldn't get this in the camera because it's hard to always get the bottom in the camera, but that's all I'm doing. I decided to make the one side pink and the other side green. On another tumbler, I think I decided to make the entire bottom either green or pink. This is really your preference. And once I'm finished with painting this, it took about 30 minutes to completely dry before moving on to epoxy in your tumbler. Make sure this is completely dry because if it is not dry all the way, once you go to epoxy these tumblers, that paint's gonna smear and it's going to expose that stainless steel. So make sure that you are drying this completely before you move on to epoxying your tumbler. And now that I have my dry tumbler, I'm going in with my coat of epoxy. All I did was I mixed about 20 mLs of epoxy, so that's 10 mLs part B and 10 mLs part A, totaling 20 mLs of epoxy. I put about 15 mLs of epoxy on this tumbler. So I've put about 15 mLs of this clear epoxy. It's not glitter or anything, so you really just need the tiniest, thinnest amount of epoxy you can on this tumbler. I probably put maybe 10, but I wanna make sure I have a very thin coat, but I wanna make sure that I do have um, a nice coat or a nice coat to cover the entire tumbler so I can lock in that design. And then I had some extra left over. You wanna make sure that you have some extra epoxy left over because we are going to add some white paint to this tumbler. So what I first did after I applied my um, epoxy to the tumbler, I'm going in with my white snow dispersion colors from CC DIY. And all I do is I take my wooden stick, I place my stick inside of the container, and then I add that dispersion paint and to that epoxy. A little bit of this paint goes a very long ways. If you don't have this on hand, you can always use pop of color paint. You can always use uh, apple barrel paints, acrylic paint, whatever you have on hand. I personally like the dispersion colors because it is made for this type of craft, mixing it with epoxy. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't swirl as much as I want it, want it to swirl. I have more control over it. So all I'm doing is I'm placing my gloved finger into the paint and I'm just smearing that paint between that pink and the green areas. And that's basically it. I'm just finger painting at this point. So that's why I told you it really didn't matter if you had those edges softened between the green and the pinks. But like I said, I just, I wanted to because I just wanted to. So I'm just making sure that this doesn't look like a stripe of white on the tumbler. I wanna kinda make it look kinda similar to waves, I guess, on a beach tumbler. 
but I want it to have a little bit of like dimension. I want some like holes in it. I want it to be a little swirly. So I just played with it a little bit. And remember whenever you apply a little bit of heat to this, it is going to move around just a little bit. So again, that's why I like the dis uh, dispersion paints because when I do apply a little bit of heat, it doesn't do like a Milky Way swirl. It stays in place into that epoxy. So if you are using your acrylic paint, just keep that in mind. It's a lot thinner and it might swirl around a little bit whenever you add a little bit of heat. So now I'm going to add my glitters to my tumbler. Don't worry, all of this will be listed in my description below. I just mix those two greens and those two pinks and I'm adding this in the same step. So I want all of this to be added and designed in this entire step. So you can add as much or as little glitter as you like to your tumbler. You can add as many colors. I just took two greens and then two pinks and I added the greens in the greens area and then I added the pinks in the pinks area. I thought about adding some white in the white area, but I think I did and I ended up scraping it out. I didn't like it, but that's personal preference. You can add however many colors you like. Once I was finished with this step, I let my tumbler spin on the cup turner for about four hours. I then turned off my cup turner for another four hours. So after those eight hours, I went in with another coat of epoxy to lock in this entire design. So I'm letting this spin. I'm not letting it fully cure for 24 hours. I'm letting it cure for about eight hours and then going in with a second coat of epoxy just to lock in the entire design on the tumbler. And now I'm going in with my coat of epoxy. I mixed about 15 mLs of epoxy for this step. So 7.5 part A and 7.5 part B, totaling 15 mLs of epoxy. Again, you still want a very thin coat, but you want a thick enough coat to cover up that glitter, especially the chunky glitters, because we all know they get a little stubborn and they like to stick up. But I went right in with this coat. I didn't sand before putting this coat on or anything. I just waited my eight hours and then I went right over with this. I didn't care if I had any bumps in the epoxy or anything. I didn't want to sand. I just wanted to place this over any bumps or lumps I may have, may have had, and then I would deal with it after this coat. Once I finished with this coat, I then let this cure for the full 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Let it spin on the cup turner for four hours and then let it air dry or air cure for another 20 hours, and then we'll move on to this next step. And then I went in with my X-Acto knife and I cleaned up the rim. I just take my X-Acto knife and I cut that excess epoxy or paint from the rim of the tumbler. I do it very slowly. I do have this fast forwarded and I make sure I don't cut myself and I make sure I don't cut the edge of the tumbler, meaning like down the side of the tumbler. Whenever you're cutting this, you wanna make sure you're cutting towards the inside. And then I'm taking my 180 grit sanding block and I'm sanding the rim of the tumbler and I'm trying to expose the smallest amount of stainless steel just to have the smallest amount of stainless steel exposed so when I do my last coat of epoxy it has that nice steel and this is a time where if you do have any bumps or lumps in your tumbler now you're going to go in and you're going to sand the tumbler so I'm just feeling around to make sure I have all of my tumbler nice and smooth and then I'm just kind of spot sanding to make sure that my tumbler is smooth I am sanding very lightly with my 180 sanding block because I don't want to sand away any of that glitter and once my sanding is finished, I place my tumbler arm back on the tumbler and then I'm going in with my 91% alcohol and I'm wiping around the tumbler. And now to bring this tumbler to life with some decals, I have my watermelon seeds and all I did was go into Cricut Design Space and search raindrops and that's what I made my watermelon seeds in. So the smallest watermelon seed is 0.25 by 0.35 and the largest watermelon seed is 0.50 by 0.70. And all I did was make random sizes and I've always made watermelon tumblers for the last five years. So what I typically do is I typically just cut out a lot of watermelon seeds and then I save them and then I just use the last year's watermelon seeds or the last project's watermelon seeds. So some of these aren't you know exactly the same sizes but it makes it unique and it makes it look more authentic whenever you don't have just one size i've always liked putting multiple size seeds on the tumbler 
And for this specific watermelon design, I'm trying to place the seeds going the same direction as that flow of the tumbler. So I'm pointing those seeds kind of like slanted or in a diagonal motion to go with the tumbler instead of straight up. And now I'm going to add my decal to the tumbler. I just made Life is Sweet using the font Black Swan from thefont.com. And I just placed that in a diagonal angle on the green area. I thought the white decal looked really nice against that white area between the green and the pinks. But again, these are your tumblers. You make them however you want to make them. I only make these for inspiration for y'all. And now I'm going to place my decal on the bottom of the tumbler. This is something I just started doing this year and I will never go back to not doing this. So if you guys don't add the bottom or your decals on the bottom of your tumblers, start doing that now and I make them on my own so it's really cheap. So now I'm going to go in with my CC DIY Quick Coat. This is a urethane sealer and you just add this around your tumbler to all the decals. I always end up adding more or <laughs> more comes out of the bottle than what I want. So I added way too much, but it's okay. This allows those decals to be placed down on the tumbler. And so whenever you epoxy, you don't have to worry about your decals lifting through that epoxy and they are stuck. This stuff is a lifesaver and I will never not use this. That takes about 25 minutes to dry. Once that CC DIY quick coat sealer is dry, we're going to go in with our one of our final coats of epoxy. So I'm first going to epoxy. I probably use about 12 ml of epoxy on this. I just want a thin coat of epoxy, but again, I want enough to cover those decals. I then let this tumbler sit on the cup turner. I let it spin and then sit on the cup turner for four hours. So a total of like eight hours. And then I went in with another coat of 12 ml of epoxy. So I'd rather do two thin coats than one thick final coat. It just makes your uh, tumbler look a lot better and it just lets it look a lot more like smooth and even and not as bulky. So once we're finished with this, we're going to clean up that rim one more time and then I'll show y'all that final tumbler. And here's the final watermelon swirl tumbler. These are so fun and actually really easy to make. It's really hard to mess these up. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I hope you guys learned something. And I wanted to show y'all another one I made. You'll see the difference between these. I actually used different fonts and I placed more glitter on the center than I did around the tumbler, if that makes sense. So I focused that glitter in the center of the green and the pink and I added more. So I like the left one a lot better than the right one. Of course, we want more glitter than none. And I also placed the seeds different ways. I didn't have it going with the flow. I placed them upright. So y'all make them however you wanna make them. Again, I make these just for inspiration. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.